Thank you, John. Hello, guys. Uh, second day of DPDK Summit. Uh, my name is Nishant Loda, and I work for Cavium, like uh, uh, John said. Um, I come from the QLogic side of things, uh, the recent acquisition of QLogic with Cavium. I'm here to talk to you about something really interesting, uh, and that what I like to call it as serverless DPDK. And uh, uh, <clears throat> we'll hold the actual message till towards the end, but uh, certainly my message does require a server, but I'm not running. Uh, DPDK on the server. Before I start off, right, um, with all the talks uh, last uh, yesterday and earlier today, there's a lot of new development going on around DPDK. What DPDK started off as something that could help accelerate the data plane for NFV applications, high speed packet processing. We heard people talking about running uh, containers uh, on it, uh, accelerating uh, data path there, microservices, and even SPDK leveraging DPDK. So <clears throat> I want to start off with a small story that I picked up. Uh, from the internet, there's this girl who asked their dad as to what is the cloud made of? Uh, it must be coming from the Bay Area techie guy, and he seemed to say it's mostly Linux servers. Uh, I added the part of running DPDK because I think that's where uh, we will be going in the next few years. Uh, with all of you guys, the potential, the innovation around DPDK, uh, at least my crystal ball says that there will be a lot more DPDK running in the cloud. So thanks to all of you guys. Uh, now back to uh, scheduled programming uh, here. Uh, my agenda looks like uh, the following. I'll start off with talking about uh, uh, some smart NIC uh, and smart NIC market projections, how we or the company that I represent, Cavium, sees the smart NIC uh, uh, growth in terms of market share, its positioning, uh, and key use cases, both current as well as emerging. I'll talk about uh, what we see as uh, some of the key challenges for current generation smart NICs, and I'll mostly talk about my own smart NICs uh, rather than the broader industry, and I'll let you uh, kind of imply from there. <clears throat> and finally, we'll say how DPDK comes to the rescue for many of these things, many of these challenges, and how we leverage DPDK from getting DPDK to run within the smart NIC and what all problems it solves for us. And finally, I, I don't think there is a silver bullet anywhere. I'll talk to you about some of the challenges that we foresee in getting to that. Uh, so let's get started. <clears throat> so before we talk about that, what is a smart NIC? OK. <clears throat> So uh, at a high level, we've all heard about what is a smart NIC, what is a basic uh, L2 NIC, right? And at least I'll tell you what my definition is. A smart NIC is basically a bunch of multi-core processors, a customized network processor, providing you various different offloads and services. And they could start off from uh, doing standard OBS offload to IPsec, crypto, compression, decompression, a whole bunch of things. The key part of smart NICs is that it is programmable by the customer. There is some kind of interface. It could be API, it could be SDK, it could be hooks uh, uh, into software that allows the customer to customize a smart NIC for their specific needs. And that's why a lot of uh, emerging technologies and very brand new use cases leverage smart NICs uh, to do either custom business process offload or emerging and new application offloads onto smart NICs. Uh, talking about standard L2 NICs, this is the world that we live in. This is the thing that DPDK most commonly operates on. They generally lead on speed transitions. Uh, you see them available to all the way till 100 gig. Uh, they do provide general purpose offloads, offloads that are applicable to a wide variety of applications all around versus smart NIC providing specialized custom offloads. Uh, uh, the standard NICs are generally not very programmable, as you guys very well know, but they have a bunch of common things. They all provide stateless offloads, tunneling offloads, uh, um, as well as uh, full integration into DPDK. All smart Smart NICs that I'm aware of, uh, including Cavium and others, have uh, PMDs integrated into DPDK versions from ever since I remember. So <clears throat> um, let's talk about how we as Cavium see the smart NIC and the overall market growing. This is internal data put together by very smart guys within the company, but I would not recommend to pick up these numbers and start your own business manufacturing and selling NICs. So take it with a little bit of grain of salt. I'll point out a couple of things uh, uh, here on this chart. So as I uh, see a little bit of backward looking for last one or two years and then forward looking all the way to 2021, 
<clears throat> what we see here is that where we stand today, the Smartnik market is about $100 million a year, and give or take uh, here and there based on how numbers are reported. <clears throat> and most of that deployment is happening at tier one large mega scale data centers who are running their own customized applications on Smartnics, right? But as we look forward into the future, we perceive and we believe that a lot of telco and NFV workloads will eventually come in and run on Smartnics. That's why where you see Smartnics today comprising one-tenth of the total L2 NIC market. They're coming to almost one-third of the total L2 market till 2020, 2021. The key takeaway from here is that we believe that telco and NFV workloads will be the primary driver for building smart NICs into a large telco tier two cloud data centers. So a smart NIC uh, to me is a platform for innovation. A lot of new things happen on a smart NIC and smart NIC ecosystem is pretty well established uh, uh, today. They have integration into various different operating systems, control planes, uh, different applications all around, including uh, uh, DPDK. Two key market segments where I see smart NICs. One is we talked about the telco uh, space and other one is around the storage use cases, especially NVMe over fabrics and NVMe where customers uh, want to create fabrics fabric attached uh, um, <clears throat> bunch of flash, JBOFs and things like that, which require somewhat of limited power, limited resource compute capabilities to run um, just a bunch of flash. <clears throat> but uh, definitely this conversation today is more about DPDK and on the networking uh, uh, side of things. I'll start off with quickly talking about uh, one of the key things that you have heard in the talks earlier today is uh, OVS offload and how uh, SmartNICs are able to offload many of the OVS processing onto the compute resources that SmartNICs uh, uh, come with. This is a kind of a quick, um, <coughs> simple test of running OVS along with IPsec uh, uh, workloads over a 10 gig Ethernet uh, NIC. And we compare and contrast here a standard L2 NIC versus uh, uh, a SmartNIC and any guesses which SmartNIC SmartNIC this is, but at a high level, there are two key metrics that a SmartNIC is measured on. First one is how many CPU cores, whether it is coming from x86 box or ARM uh, server class CPU, are we freeing up from doing network processing, from data plane uh, processing. And in this example, you see when I uh, test with OVS plus IPsec on a host-based system, we burn through literally almost all of the 10, 11 cores of that system to get to a performance level that I'll show you in the next chart. Uh, well, when you offload this all to um, <coughs> uh, 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 a smart neck, um, you see all those cores are available. Now, this is a very critical point that you should understand, and I would like to uh, kind of reiterate this. Uh, today's architectures with cloud computing, infrastructure as a service, software as a service, uh, require that cloud vendors have to monetize the compute resources that they loan out uh, to their customers. Anytime the compute resources are burnt, processing network I.O., it cannot be easily monetized. It cannot be charged back to a customer. And that is why smart NICs play extremely important role, where the x86 or the ARM server class CPU is left alone to run business applications that can be charged back to the customer. Okay, uh, so then next slide kind of shows um, how the performance differs between OVS plus IPsec running on the host uh, versus offloading uh, to a smart NIC. Uh, clearly, you get a full 10 gig line rate performance uh, when running on a smart NIC uh, doing OVS plus IPsec. So benefits are pretty much clear. There's no performance downside. There's definitely upside uh, here as well as freeing up server CPU cycles. So um, one of the approaches that we use uh, to offload OVS and IPsec onto our smart NICs so works somewhat like this. At the top, you see the standard x86 box, user space, kernel space. Uh, in a standard model where uh, a smart NIC is not involved, you will see that the host is running all the OVS components, whether it is uh, vSwitchD, OVS data path is running in the kernel, the control plane is running uh, in the user space within the x86 uh, box. Right? When we bring a smart NIC into the picture, the data path is pulled into the smart NIC and accelerated using the compute resources of the smart NIC. Not only that, we also are able to pull the control plane down onto the smart NIC, allowing us to deliver a single subsystem 
that allows you to manage your entire OBS and virtual switching infrastructure onto the smart NIC. Once again, going back to the point of freeing up server CPU resources so that they can be monetized. End of the day, what we work for, the products we build need to make money for our companies and our customers, and that's why smart NICs play an important role. But what are the challenges over there, right? Today's solutions, um, I can say at least uh, uh, for Cavium, are built on a somewhat proprietary and custom infrastructure. And this infrastructure today is more, if I can use the word simple exact, which is the proprietary uh, name, which is a run to completion model where we provide a, a SDK and an interface to customers to write their own applications that they want to offload uh, to the smart NIC. We also provide package solutions for OVS as well as IPsec. So if somebody does not want to modify anything and run a package solution, that is an option. But end of the day, this is somewhat of a proprietary model. And what that, the downside of that is there's a bunch of skill set required both internally as well as the customer to help develop applications. And that can be challenging. The growth of smart NICs that you see in my previous uh, a chart <clears throat> must happen, and the reason it will happen is because we all vendors and developers, all of uh, us in the room, have to make it simpler for customers to write their applications onto a smart NIC. We need a simpler data plane that can run on a smart NIC. Okay. So um, why not we use uh, DPDK for that uh, uh, networking data plane? So what we so today's architecture, like I discussed, is somewhat uh, MIPS based. And in the short term, out in the uh, future, we will plan to take this uh, smart NIC and put ARM V8 cores on it, run standard Linux uh, uh, on it, and run standard DPDK. Everything that you guys uh, work for would run uh, over there on DPDK, and that will create an open architecture running standard Linux standard DPDK, so customers' applications which are written on top of DPDK can simply be ported over to this platform. Okay. So why DPDK? Well, we all have interest in DPDK. We all work for DPDK and have, um, to me, DPDK is a proven networking data plan. I don't think there is any doubt in anybody's mind. There has been a lot of DPDK wannabes in the past, if some of you guys remember. Uh, but DPDK definitely is the proven data, data plan. A lot of people writing their applications on top of DPDK. And it is natural for a smart NIC to adopt DPDK as its own networking data plan and help simplify the portability of those applications from x86, uh, from a server class processor onto the smart NIC. Uh, especially the growth in telco use cases help us uh, make this transition if we bring DPDK to run within the compute resources of the NIC. So this is kind of a before and after uh, model. This is the current model. And I won't delve too much into it, uh, into this, because a lot of this is uh, a custom processor architecture uh, coming from one of our uh, Octeon subsystems uh, that runs uh, on the smart NIC. Uh, but at a high level, what this architecture looks like is there is a data plane which is simple executive based that allows high speed packet processing while the control plane runs on standard uh, somewhat Linux running uh, cores within the embedded uh, processor. There are some challenges with this. And the challenges with this model is that any high speed data plane offload requires the use of the SDK to offload from functionality onto these things. And again, slows down the adoption, slows down the time to market for customers' applications. The next generation product, which is really uh, <clears throat> not too far away, will remove the proprietary architecture and will run standard ARM V8 cores on it, which will run standard Linux uh, on it, and standard DPDK on it. Um, it will leverage uh, all the stuff that uh, for our Octeon processors already upstream into DPDK. The various pole mode drivers will provide different services uh, on it, and we'll run OBS DPDK on this NIC, and that will help uh, not just accelerate uh, the data plane, uh, leveraging everything that DPDK stands for, but also give us a platform to easily port applications onto smart NIC. See, the success of any deployment is not just its technological promise, not just uh, all the smart things we guys do, but how easy it is for somebody to run their applications on top of that. But there are some potential challenges, right? And I think some of, many of these uh, have been discussed and solutions proposed in the previous uh, uh, sessions. 
DPDK was created, invented, all the work that uh, uh, you guys do is done on a high speed, powerful, no limits, uh, ever increasing number of cores and uh, clock speeds, x86 uh, uh, processor. We're taking DPDK and running it on an embedded processor. And that is no easy task. And there are things that we need to look at carefully. The resources on embedded processor are limited. The power envelope on it is limited. And <clears throat> DPDK, all the performance it gives comes at a cost of possible hogging the cores and things like that. I know we have discussed a bunch of other uh, things, whether it's the event-driven model, better memory uh, management, but a lot of those things uh, are essential in getting DPDK to run on an embedded processor. I also see um, just my own observation talking to customers and partners, there seems to be somewhat of a dependency of applications to DPDK versions. I know theoretically DPDK is supposed to be totally backward compatible, but a lot of NFV applications are still tied to a specific DPDK version have not really moved on. Some of these things as well as uh, um, a, a more established, a more proven mechanism to leverage hardware offloads that are provided by embedded processor within DPDK, and uh, you know more deterministic performance and bursts and things like that. If some of these things and all the work you guys are doing around DPDK will help, in my view, make a successful deployment of DPDK onto the embedded resources of a smart NIC, accelerating the adoption of NFE applications onto a smart NIC, running DPDK on its embedded course. That was pretty much my prepared uh, talk here. Um, we can do some questions, or we are out of time, but there is a panel at 11.40 where I think we have a bunch of people uh, coming up here and um, talking once again about smart NICs, FPGAs, and all the things uh, uh, about DPDK in it. John asked me to finish on time, and I'm Thank right you. on time. Thank you, Nishan. And you, he will be back on a panel at uh, 11.40. There's a, a panel of eight or nine speakers, all the morning speakers. So let's take a break now and try and be back for 10.45. I know it's only 10 minutes, but let's try and do that. Bring your coffees back to the table or whatever. Thank you. Thank you.